nice to see all of you this evening. 689. I am so glad that our Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. Let's say this thing together. <laughs> shown to us through your son Jesus Christ. We do thank you that as Lord of heaven and earth, uh, you reveal yourself and your son through your word. And those who humbly receive it like children uh, hear it and receive it. Lord, we acknowledge that we have no wisdom apart from you. Lord, we do pray for those that who are labor, laboring and are heavy laden, that have not come to you for rest. Lord, we pray that you would help us to bring others to Christ who promises rest for their souls. We thank you, Lord, for the rest that you have given to us. Lord, help us to follow um, your son's example of being gentle, of humble service, a lowly spirit, so that we may become more like him. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 670 is our next hymn. Be strong, be strong in the Lord.
Psalm 71, and it's been in our reading for our uh, church for the past couple days. Uh, I'll put the words up on the screen, to, I'll just read it. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong refuge to which I may resort continually. You have given the commandment to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O oh my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For you are my hope, O oh Lord God. You are my trust from my youth. By you I have been upheld from birth. You are he who took me out of my mother's womb. My praise shall continually be of you. I have become as a wonder to many, but you are my strong refuge. Let my mouth be filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Do not forsake me when my strength fails, for my enemies speak against me. And those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together, saying, God has forsaken him. Pursue and take him, for there is none to deliver him. O oh God, do not be far from me. O oh my God, make haste to help me. Let them be confounded and consumed who are adversaries of my life. Let them be covered with reproach and dishonor who seek my hurt. But I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. My mouth shall tell of your righteousness and your salvation all the day, for I do not know the limits. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of your righteousness, of yours only. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth, and to this day I declare your wondrous works. Now also, when I am old and gray-headed, O oh God, do not forsake me. Until I declare your strength to this generation, and your power to everyone who is to come. Also, your righteousness, O God, is very high. You who have done great things, O God, who is like you? You who have shown me great and severe troubles, shall revive me again, and bring me up again from the depths of the earth. You shall increase my greatness, and comfort me on every side. Also, with the lute I will praise you, and your faithfulness, O my God. To you I will sing with a harp, O Holy One of Israel. My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing to you, and my soul, which you have redeemed. My tongue also shall talk of your righteousness all the day long, for they are confounded. They are brought to shame who seek my hurt. Psalm 71. Our next hymn is 244, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. 244. <laughs> Thank you for the generosity 
of the great riches that you have given to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, that in a small way that we would help follow his example of giving all. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us to understand how important the things that you give to us are to reflect your glory. In Jesus' name. song is 146, but before we stand and sing, are there any testimonies this evening? Okay, let's stand and sing, My Shepherd Will Supply My Need.
come from Psalm 71. And uh, the quick lesson is that we need to pray and go. That's it. Not like right now, but <laughs> when we have difficulty. Um, we got our dishwasher maybe four, four years ago, five years ago? It's been a while. But it's, it's new to us. And it has this handy button where you can pick which one, which wash you want, and then you get a pick to start now, start later, or start really late. And I like that because, you know, sometimes you get hungry after dinner and not all the dishes are in the dishwasher. And so if you start it later, you can still put your dish in there and it's still gonna go whether you, you remember to put it in there or not. So the idea is everything gets, still gets clean and that decision has already been made in the past. The idea is we have to understand that God is going to take care of things. It's already set. But what we need to do is pray about it and go. So, Psalm 71, and I'm going to start in verse... Psalm 71 and verse 12. The psalmist, we don't know who wrote this psalm. Uh, many people want to say it was David, but we don't know. It's someone who sought for God, um, someone that has seen God work in their life from a very early age. And so he says he doesn't go from one place to another. That's a very pagan idea that the, um, the people of the land of Canaan thought. Well, you could be the God of the mountains, you could be the God of the plains, you could be the God of the sea. But God is the God of the universe. His presence doesn't change. So why does he say, don't be far from me? Well, God doesn't move. He, his presence is throughout his creation. But the psalmist feels, because of the difficulty, that God is far from him. Because if God was here, in his mind, he's thinking, I wouldn't have these problems. But we know through the scripture, people who are close to God have problems. People who are close to God have problems. People who slander them or, or threaten them physically, just like the psalmist was. So what we need to remind ourselves are, of is even though we feel that God may be far from us, that's never the case. In the New Testament, it tells us that, in fact, he will never leave us nor forsake us. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit worked periodically. Um, Samson would call down, there would would be filled with the Holy Spirit. Saul, King Saul, would be filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesy. That's not the way it works in the New Testament age. We are all filled with the Holy Spirit. We cannot escape God's presence. But sometimes we feel that he's far away. But that comes from a lack of faith. And that's what the psalmist was going through. He says, make haste to help me. There's no problem in asking God to quickly relieve a, a problem. That's what the psalmist was asking for. And God sometimes does that for us. But many times he asks us to wait. Uh, I was talking to somebody uh, last week who uh, was told by the doctors to take their antibiotics. And as soon as the symptoms had, uh, had uh, been relieved, they stopped taking their antibiotics. Guess what happened? Their symptoms returned. So since, he, since they didn't follow the doctor's directions, <laughs> those symptoms return because they felt, well, I'm done. The virus must be killed because the symptoms have gone away. In the same way, we have to understand that while the symptoms of trouble and, and difficulty may still be present, God can be working invisibly behind the scenes without us knowing, mm -hmm. noticing that despite our difficulties, God still is at work. And it's not something that we may notice or even be aware of because we're finite, but God does still work. So what do we have to do? Each day, we have to take our faith pill. We have to continue to trust God. Okay, God, these symptoms of difficulties and trials and troubles are still here, 
but I still trust in you. I know you're going to work it out, and I trust you today. And that's what we have to remember. He is not far from us. He is even now working behind the scenes. In verse 13, he prays that them, let them, let them be confounded and consumed who are adversaries of my life. Let them be covered with reproach and dishonor who seek my hurt. Now notice he is not saying, I will confound them. I will consume them. Those adversaries of my life, I will cover them with reproach and dishonor. This is a prayer that the psalmist is giving to God. This is how I would like you, God, to stop this evil plan against me. But notice he's saying, let them. He's giving it up to God. He's allowing God to take care of this situation. He's not taking care of it himself in his own strength and his own might. God foils evil plans. We see that in the Bible. Pharaoh had a plan to eliminate the Israelite people, but God foiled that plan. He stopped it, and they became a greater multitude. Pharaoh wanted to kill the Israelites at the Red Sea. Pharaoh's plan was foiled by God's miraculously parting of the Red Sea. So we see how God works out his uh, will by foiling the evil plans of others. The scribes and the Pharisees want to stop the gospel. They want to uh, eliminate the, the leaders of the church. But as they persecute the church, the church explodes, and it reaches out through all the world. So God's plans continue as he confounds and consumes his adversaries. The word for adversary is literally Satan. Now, it's not capital S, but it's the opponent, the accuser, the adversary. And so that's how we can apply it. Who are the adversaries of my life? Well, it's not Becky in accounting. It's not the guy next to me on Highway 4. Those are not my adversaries in my life. Not really. Uh, they may be temporarily, but they're not your real adversaries of life that you need to pray to God about them being confounded and consumed. Because we know our adversaries are the world, the flesh, and the devil. So while Becky in accounting may be influenced by the world, her real problem is that the influence of the world. Our flesh is a problem. Our biggest problem is ourselves. I can't escape the, the sin that I choose to do. I can't go anywhere. I'm stuck with me. I have this warning within my flesh, like, Robbie preached about Sunday morning. The spirit against the flesh. The flesh against the spirit. If I walk in the spirit, I won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. But it's still there. And then the devil. The devil is, is infusing, is, is inspiring, if we want to use that phrase, of the world system. He's deceiving people. He's being deceived. But we know, because we've read the end of the Bible, that all those three things, our adversaries, are defeated. The world system goes away. Babylon has fallen, as Revelation would tell us. Our flesh, our sin, um, that will be removed from all God's children's presence. We will no longer have to worry about sinful lusts. The devil is thrown into the, the lake of fire forever. But we still have our adversaries today. The promise of their defeat is future. The harm can be done today. But again, it's up to God. We have to trust that God is going to defeat them. And God will win. We need to pray that God would deliver us from the evil one. Luke eleven four. But we can't forget. We can't forget that each day is a spiritual battle. It's not primarily a economic battle or a political battle. It's not a cultural battle. It is a spiritual battle. And so when we pray, we have to understand that God will take care of the adversaries of our lives. And that's difficult because uh, you probably get emails. I got an email today from some uh, somebody selling stuff online and about how you need to celebrate this month that's full of sin. 
Well, is that an adversary of my life? Well, it's part of the world system, right? It's part of the devil. And so we can get quite discouraged. I mean, you can't watch a commercial without being assaulted with some sort of sin. And it can be quite discouraging because it seems like we're losing. But we know Babylon will fall. We know the devil will be thrown into the lake of fire. And so we leave it up to God. And that's what we need to do. Pray. So the first part is pray. This is a prayer. Let them be defeated. Let the adversaries of this psalmist's life be defeated. The evil plans confounded, consumed, stopped. We can pray that as well. The positive would be, Lord Jesus, come quickly. That's what we see. And that's the same message. Because when he does come, all these things, the world, the flesh, and them, all that get defeated. But notice, the psalmist goes on to say, before his enemies are defeated, but... I will hope continually. He's not waiting to see if God defeats his enemies, if he, God uh, heaps scorn and shame upon these people that have evil plan for him. He's not waiting. He's prayed about it. Now, he says, I will hope continually. The idea of hope is, I'm going to wait on God. He's going to take care of this. He's good. He's all powerful. He's all wise. He knows what he's doing. Because I can hope continually, I can wait for his judgment, and then I can move on to actually doing something. I can praise God. Because I've given it to God, and now I can go do what I'm supposed to be doing. First of all, praising the God that will judge righteously. He says, I'm going to praise you more and more and more. So when we focus on the evil in this world or the evil that is struggling within us and we get angry or we get bitter or we are fearful of the future, we're not doing what the psalmist is doing. We're not praising God because we're still holding on to the responsibility of those things being defeated. Boy, if we lose this election or if we, this, this doesn't happen, boy, it's all going downhill. <coughs> it ain't. But you know what? God is still in control. You know, Nebuchadnezzar wasn't a nice guy. The Assyrian army weren't nice people. But God uses those evil people to accomplish his task, his purposes. So when we see these things, don't hold on to the thought that we have the power to defeat the world, the flesh, or the devil because we don't. And giving that to God, that prayer of, God, you're in control. You are all powerful. I'm weak and I am, I am so limited in my strength, in my capacity to understand things. I trust in you and your plan. Because here's, what's, here's what happens. We can either be a Joseph or we can be a Samson. Joseph had evil things done to him, wicked, evil things. And yet each step of the way, he trusted God. And the Bible tells us that God was with Joseph. He didn't turn to bitterness. He didn't turn to anger because he trusted God's hand in his life. Whereas Samson saw the evil things done to him. And he constantly went through the cycle of attacking and, and seeking revenge and being blinded by his own uh, vengeance and lust. Literally, he was blinded by that. Even in his last prayer to God, he says, I want to take vengeance upon these people who blinded me. His job was to take care of the Philistines. But it, he, he took God out of the equation, and it was just a me versus them. He didn't see God's hand in his life. Now, he still accomplished God's task, but the experience of his life was vastly different than Joseph's. Joseph's brothers never received the justice that they deserved, right? As far as we know. Joseph never punished his brothers. God never punished his brothers, as far as we know. But Joseph continued to do what was right. He left everything all his concerns, his bitterness, his anger, his fear, all with God, and he did what was right. 
The psalmist says, My mouth shall tell of your righteousness and your salvation all the day, for I do not know their limits. We don't know, humanly speaking, how righteous, how right, how perfect our holy God and judge is. We don't know the limitation of God's rescue, of his salvation, because we are limited and he is not. Again, are we focused on seeking the judgment of God in other people's lives, or are we resting in God being the judge? Because we can also be like Jonah, where we see the evil in the world. The Assyrians were terrible, awful people. They were. And Jonah didn't want to extend any mercy to them, but God did. You see, we are in a spiritual battle where people can come to our side. We are ambassadors. We're not looking to improve our uh, uh, kill-to-death ratio, to put it in video games terms. We are looking to appeal to others that are enemies of God and to plead with them to be reconciled to God because they face the judgment of God to come. So our focus should be on proclaiming God's righteousness, God's salvation all the day because it is unknown to us its limitations, which may include your neighbor. You say, well, it's not easy to trust when things are evil, when things are bad, or when things are, it seems to be moving in one direction. You're right. When we are suffering, it is very difficult to wait on God. Jesus tells a parable of an unjust judge, where this lady bothers the judge so much. Now, Jesus says this judge doesn't fear God or man, but he's so bothered by this lady, he finally relents and gives the lady what she wants. What does she want? She wants justice. And this widow, who has no power at all, finally gets justice. And Jesus contrasts this unjust judge with his father, the just judge, in saying, Hear what the unjust judge says. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? The obvious answer is yes, of course he will. He's not an unjust judge that doesn't hear us. He is the righteous, just judge. I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. You say, well, how fast is speedily? Well, it's on God's schedule. Um, and that's where we have to take trust in God each day. Notice the psalm says, I will hope in God him continually. So each time our fears about the future, each time we get angry about the present, each time the bitterness of the past comes up, we pray and say, God, you take care of this. I'm, I'm waiting on you to take care of this, and I'm going to go. I'm going to do what's right, because I know you have seen what has happened, and you will avenge speedily. He says, I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of your righteousness, of yours only. So now he has gone from problem to prayer and now to action. Prayer, praise, action. Praise is part of action. That's, our lives should be, everything we should be doing is a praise to God. But he says, I'm going to go. But I'm not going to go on my own strength. I'm going to talk. I'm not going to talk about my righteousness. I'm going to go in the strength of the Lord. I can face any opponent, the psalmist says, because God can't be defeated. I can make mention of your righteousness, of yours only. Notice the psalmist isn't defending his reputation, his righteous actions. He's saying, I'm going to talk about God. I'm going to talk about how right God is. I'm not going to worry about what people say about me. So, as we are opposed in this spiritual battle, we have to trust God and His schedule. We may not like God's schedule, 
We may think that God is slow to judge. That's called mercy. And God waited us and waited on us long enough for us to stop being enemies. And it is uncomfortable to be told that we are evil when we follow the Bible. It is difficult when we face the cost of being opposed spiritually. It may seem that evil is winning in the world, in churches, and even in our family. But we have to wait on God. We set that all that care on Him. We praise Him and we go. We pray about it and we leave it with God. Every time it comes up, we pray about it, we leave it with God, and then we go. God, you have me here for a short amount of time, and I'm here to do your will. I can't focus upon the evil that's going on in this world and still do my job as your servant. We have to pray and go. So the right perspective comes from Romans 8.31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who really can be against us? The answer is no. Pray about it and go. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for your word, and we thank you for the strength that you give to, uh, to us as your children. Uh, the power that is uh, in us, the same power that you used to resurrect our Savior, Jesus Christ, as it says in Ephesians 1. We pray, Lord, that you would help us not to be stumbled by the evil in this world even the evil that is so present in our lives. Help us to focus on what you have for us to do. Help us, Lord, to be worshipful in everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen.